Folks, we're going to press on. This next comedian coming to the stage, I've been on a tons of shows with him. You're going to love him. Please start climbing right now, Mr. Cormac O'Brien. <laughs> Oh, I know what you're wondering. Where's the rest of the barbershop quartet? <laughs> Sorry, it's just me. <laughs> My name is Cormac O'Brien. I recently turned 50 years old. Uh, great. Fuck yeah. We all know what that means now, don't we? Yes. It means that now when I sit down on the toilet, my balls go right into the water. <laughs> Think that's funny, do you? First time it happened, I uh, I thought to myself, what fresh hell is this? Talk about a bolt from the blue. Uh, is that on me? You know, should I have seen that coming? I, you know, like I, it had never occurred to me to Google middle age scrotum and gratitude. You know, so didn't see. You know what? All right, whatever. Uh, I'm 50, so now when I shave, I include my ears. I've got a little bald spot coming in, but I never signed up for teabagging toilet water. All right? It is not cool that my junk has started resembling taffy that's been left out in the sun. Not cool at all. So, uh, I'm a father. Yes, funny thing about fatherhood. Very interesting. First time, you know, as soon as it happened to me, all these people came up to me and slapped me on the shoulder and congratulated me and said, well done, man, well done. And I, and I thought, this is all well and good, but can we please have a little perspective here? All right? All I did was fuck my wife. All right? That's, that was my sole contribution to this, to this whole epic affair. It's a, you know, in fact, if I remember correctly, afterward I had a cigarette and a glass of bourbon. It's hard making life. Um, you know, by contrast, uh, what my wife did makes her look like the greatest magician of all time. You know, I mean, she uh, she's like pulling tiny human beings out of her crotch. <laughs> She's feeding it with a magic elixir she produces in her tits. <laughs> Holy cow! You know? So she's the greatest thing since Houdini. I'm more like Pickles and Clown. You know what fair. <laughs> <laughs> well, my first and, and only trick. <laughs> I'm gonna get a boner. <laughs> and then I will make it go away. <laughs> yeah, bro, fucking Gadara, huh? If you missed that trick, I can do it again. In about 20 minutes. Uh, I'm, I'm very conflicted about. Uh, Parent, but I had a lot of conflicting feelings. For one thing, uh, I have a very strained relationship with my own parents um, because they're dead. And uh, I don't think that's cool. You know? But thanks, thanks a lot, Mom and Dad. Talk about lying down on a job. You know, and people come up to me and they say, uh, Cormac. They live well into their 80s. What did you expect? And I'm like, oh, so that's how it's going to be now? All right, we're going to split hairs? We're going to make excuses? All right, fuck you. Take their side. Whatever. I don't, I don't need this. Whatever. Um, but not, you know, now that I'm a parent, my greatest concern is that um, I, it's, I'm sending my daughter out into this horrible world, this shitty freaking world. I mean, it's awful. We've got the, the alt-right and the neo-Nazis and the traditional Nazis and, <laughs> and misogynists and anti-Semites. Holy cow! I mean, it's like the zombie apocalypse, only instead of the undead coming after us, it's straight, white, male, paranoid assholes. <laughs> and this really fucks me up because... <laughs> I'm a straight, white, male, and they're ruining the brand. <laughs> 
I mean, I've gotten sick of this shit. Last night, a black guy saw me coming and crossed the street to avoid me. And I couldn't blame him. That was the worst part. Hey, oh. I know. It's not just racism. I mean, these guys wrap their heads around all kinds of bullshit that doesn't make any sense to me. You know, I, I'm not worried that my daughter is going to lose her virginity to a trans person in the ladies' room. You know, all right? Get over it. Move on. You know, and what's with all the groping? Jesus Christ, I don't grab anyone's pussy. All right? Period. All right? Without permission. In writing. Notarized. <laughs> I have a truly fucked up sex life. All right, but that's not the point. That's not the point. All right, I am a straight white American male who isn't a complete jackbag. How about that, right? Thank you. Thank you. I'm fucking exotic. I'm like a unicorn. All right. I mean, you know how many of us are left? 107. <laughs> exactly 107. We uh, keep in touch on Skype. There's a barbecue every August. That's right. We're like the buffalo. There used to be whole herds of us roaming majestically across the countryside. But not anymore, man. Not anymore. So, um... Here's a question. Do we have any uh, homophobes here tonight? <laughs> any haters in the house up there? <laughs> I'm confused by homophobes. Um, last night I was talking to this guy uh, about a camping trip I'd been on uh, with a bunch of friends of mine, including my friend Ryan. And the guy stops me and he says, wait a minute, I know Ryan. Isn't he gay? And I said, as the ocean is deep. <laughs> and the guy said, well, Weren't you afraid he was going to fuck you up the ass? <laughs> Where was my head? <laughs> Here I had been worried about black flies and bears. Should have been worried about Ryan's dick in my ass. I mean, what does this guy think exactly, you know? Like, well, they're, they're gay, so they have no impulse control. Everybody knows that. It's like Tourette's syndrome for penises. I mean, I've known Ryan for years, and never once has it occurred to me to always keep him in front of me. There you go, Ryan. Stay in the radar. Thanks, guys. You've been great. Disappointment, Cormac O'Brien, let him hear it.